everybody. Welcome to Tadai Ma Terrace House Podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I'm Robert Scarpanito, and I am joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanwa. Jack Cepeda. Raindrop. Drop top. Driving with Haruka in a black car. What's up, everybody? <laughs> You know, is it is it weird that my brain thought you were gonna say Edishai must say? And it took me like an <laughs> actual two seconds to realize, wait, he's not saying <laughs> We're gonna we have drop to do it the, now, Colin. We're gonna drop the top on this episode. This is a thick ass episode. We gotta get started soon. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. And, That's how yep. Jack would say it, right? And we have Colin Sparkling. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like no. This show is name me another reality show where someone is consistently being made fun of and called a pathetic virgin. <laughs> because yes, yeah. so, house is one of the only ones I can think of. Yeah, yeah. This episode opens with the uh, the whole panel just fucking beating on Yama. And this keep in mind, this episode's book ended by yama is a pathetic virgin loser and <laughs> it ends with yama is a pathetic married loser <laughs> dude they just go fucking in on yama and it's great it's so good and then at the end they're just like by the way um we know you're married now but don't think we we think that you're a guy who fucks <laughs> just yeah. because you're married now <laughs> he is no cherry boy he, he is, is no cherry boy. Cherry boy. <laughs> I am Playboy. <laughs> I am Playboy. <laughs> and then Toku, he's like, I am 100% hotter than you. I've got to say, <laughs> I think that got, was the like, most pissed I've so ever seen Toku. Angry. He was so pissed. Like, he was... He was triggered, man. He was. I, it seems sincere too. I'm like, dude. And he's like, I hope you have an expedient divorce. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Savage. I mean, it's all in good fun, though. They're all characters. Yeah, it's all. It's all just. They're all, they're all friends. Hopefully, maybe. Um, I don't know, but I, I guess yeah. Since we're talking about it off the top, we belated congratulations to one of our favorite panelists, Yama, Hi. on on the happy wedding. Tarichan. It was a whirlwind romance. They met two months. They're married. Holy crap. And she's apparently one of the most popular actresses in that area. Crazy. Yeah, I'd, like, I'd you, like to flick on the, the reverse lights. Two months? Yeah. Uh, you know. But I mean, hey, yeah. they're happy. She, she's, yeah. she's 43. She's 33. Maybe it's just like, yeah, we figured it out by now. They yeah. uh, they came together. Terrace House brought them together. That's what he said. That was the theme, right? That if it wasn't for the show, this marriage wouldn't have happened. Cra- and how shocking is that he's the only married person on the panel? I was not expecting yeah. to hear that, that news. That was wild. I like mean, of all, I think, of all of them, too, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think yeah. they, I mean, a couple of them have significant others, at least, right? Toku I references dating a lot. You Everyone's... doesn't talk about it, but. No, I don't know. Yeah, I thought but, Tori Chan for sure was married, but I wasn't positive. But obviously, she's not. saving herself for Ruka. Please, no. I don't. I don't know no. if anyone's saving themselves for Ruka after this week's episode. Yikes! Yeah, Ew. it's it's a spicy one. But this, this yeah, a hard left turn, y'all. This episode for sure, for sure. Um, but no, I mean, just congrats to Yama, congrats to you, Aoi. Happy yeah. marriages, happy wedding. But let's yes. dive in to this 57 minute long episode. Cause Whoa. oh my God, this is a long episode. Like there has I been an intermission. <laughs> I legit needed an intermission while watching it. I just like put it on pause and I had to walk so, away. Like, just... <laughs> Are we watching Game of Thrones or Terrace House? I don't know if it was yeah. just so chock full of plot. That like I had to too. I had to pause him. Like there's a lot here. Like had to pause. Yeah. You know, go get get a drink, crack my neck, like do a lap, and then <laughs> a come victory back. Victory lap. It, yeah, it was like too much. I was just like, this is a big ass episode. Yeah. Well, there were several. I mean, the panelists were losing track of what the hell was going on. Everyone's like, this is crazy. There is so much. Wait a minute. Like so many side conversations <laughs> happening. So many, so many dates being planned. Mm. Yeah. So let's dive in. We started yeah. the episode in the kitchen with Shohei Haruka and Risako and Ruka. And here we get to see some dates start to get planned, right? Shohei and Haruka finalize their plans for going on that golfing date. And then Risako is kind of on Ruka's ass of it and saying, hey, plan this skating date for me, please. Please, can it's, you plan this for us? It's a scene we've seen several times before because it's just Risako talking to ruka and then haruka being like mm. <laughs> no what i want to ask stare. 
Did anyone else think Ruka looked a little bit like Uchi with that hat? Uchi from BGITC? I could see it. He had that, I, like, the jawline and with the oh. hat. I don't know. There was something about it that was like, that looks like Uchi. Kind of looks like, he, he looks like a mix between Uchi and Yudai. Uchi. Younger version. Uchi. They, they've all got a lineage there, I think, between skinny, uh, you know, what, bowl, bowl cuts, basically. Yeah, tall, I lanky. Say, I, I have opinions on Ruka's hair, but we'll get to that soon. Mm, yeah. Mm. Uh, so let's get into the first major I don't know if this is a date necessarily, but the first major hang sesh of the episode, right? We have Haruka and Shohei on their golfing date, but first they spend a lot of time in the Jag, and I think this is maybe one of the longest car oh. scenes we've seen in a while, because they cover a lot of stuff. The first big thing they cover is uh, the Ruka Risa thing, right? Where mm-hmm. Shohei kind of thinks, do you think Ruka's maybe a little too young to date? And Haruka is like, Ruka's totally into Risiko, right? Like, come on. What is going on here, you think, in Shohei's head? Like, what if he did? It, he wasn't. But what if he did, like, think, oh, this is a date. I'm going out with Ruka. We're going to go <laughs> golfing. This is awesome. And then all she talks about the whole time is Ruka. And this is just, like, you know, um, information I finding. I think I think I this part of the episode signals an evolution in, in the way everyone thinks about each other. Because here's Haruka thinking that Risako likes Ruka and vice versa when that's totally not the case. And then Risako turns out to like Kenny and then Haruka switches to Kenny too. Mm. Yeah. There's a scramble that happens. There yes. is. I, I kind of think Shohei is taking up this position as the 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 wise sage in the house maybe i don't think mm. he's really going for anyone romantically he's just kind of yeah. he kind of has everyone's back it's kind of the vibe i'm getting from him he gets points with me this episode i'll say like i i did i wasn't really warm to him in the early episodes but he's he's growing on me a little bit i'm starting to like him a little bit more yeah. i don't know i don't know exactly what it is but he just seems a little more friendly a little less uh, abrasive. And I was about to say, I mean, <clears throat> we get to spend time with him, just the baseline of like him being there and not talking about being wishy washy, which is the main part of his limelight so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because now my new favorite thing about him is his laugh, because his laugh is so uncomfortable and I it's love obnoxious. it. <laughs> his laugh is obnoxious. It's obnoxious. He's like, the, ha, ha, ha. you know, that kind of laugh. It's so <laughs> weird. Like the, it's like the, uh, the obnoxious up high stoner laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. <laughs> I need to go back and watch this now. <laughs> I need to go back and watch that because I didn't notice it. Because yeah. he gets real giggly when they're when they're golfing. For sure. <laughs> oh For yeah. sure. Well well, uh, let's get there to the to the driving range. But how far away is this driving range? Because when they leave and get in the car, it's daylight. Then when they get to the driving range, it's dark. It's like holy shit. Yeah, I mean, they left, in that car? At, they left at like 7 p.m., right? So that's around the time the sun's probably setting, right? This is May-ish, okay. right? It was dark. Yeah, though. that was, was like, a wow. lo- that's late to be at a driving range, I thought. Like, set, yeah. I don't know I don't know how late driving range should stay open, but I feel like I, I getting remember there like like asking her if it was going to be o'clock. too late to be at 7. Yeah, yeah. I remember that, yeah. too. Remember, like I said, sometimes you hit your best balls before the sun comes up. And at nighttime, the sun is down. So, Dude. Robert. I'm just saying. Iconic. There's... Just ignore it. Ah! <laughs> I need that on a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyways, but, but, how well, satisfying. Oh, go ahead. Before they get to the golfing uh, place, though, they also talk about Kenny. And this is kind of the first scene. Like, now looking back in retrospect, this is the first scene we're really seeing Haruka expressing a little bit of interest in Kenny, right? Because she explains, like, at first, I was I didn't really get Kenny. I didn't really know how to talk to him. But now I can say Ohio to him in the morning. Ohio. And she was really happy about that. Baby steps. Well, yeah. Yeah. It, it was like fucking mean girls, you know. I asked him what the date was, kind of a vibe. How, how um, awkward do you have to be, though, where someone can't even say good morning to you? That's pretty well, awkward. Good morning to strangers <laughs> on the yeah. elevator. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't awkward. know. Like, have you. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure everyone's had that person. I, this is a more concentrated case because she lives with this guy. But have you ever had that that interaction where that's someone you say you see pretty consistently? Maybe it's at work or whatever. And it's always very surface level conversation. Like you don't really know each other well at all, even though you see each other consistently. But it's always like that vague, like, hey, how are you? 
Uh, you're on a first name basis, but only a first name basis. Right. I mean, it's just kind of, that's kind of it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, I, I definitely have people at work that like, you know, I I don't see them very often because they're there during the day. I'm there at night. So it's just like, hey, how are you? Surface level, blah, blah, blah. Right. And then it's awkward otherwise. Yeah, I Because it's that. like we know we don't have time to get to know each other or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, then we get to the Lotek Hasai Golf driving range place where uh, Shohei grows from being a putt-putt boy into a full-fledged driving range boy. I thought you said you golf before. Mini golf. Oh. Putt-putt. <laughs> like yeah, putt. He says putt-putt. Oh, so. so what I love about this scene, I had asked for this, if we remember a couple episodes ago when she talked about going golfing. I was like, why didn't we see that? I want to see her, right, on the range. And so she's not, you know, she's on the driving range here, and it was so satisfying to watch her hit those golf balls she's so good her form it's just mm. really i don't know the just the sound of it getting hit and just seeing it flying i don't know some asmr stuff going on but i was like yes oh, yeah. give me the, more the cameras were real focused in on her form yeah that was okay a little bit of mill gaze happening look yeah. i get it she seems like a decent golfer a golf person golfist if you will a golfist a golfist <laughs> but golfist. there was just this this one lingering shot just just ass nothing like it was just a close-up shot of buttocks. it wasn't even like her like making the hit it was just her like no, shuffling she to the side and getting into position. I remember and her then twisting. It was... Yeah, mm. but it's just like, are we, are we, are we really concerned about like <laughs> this is where your hips need to be while you're, you know, driving the ball or whatever it is? I don't know what it is. I don't mm-hmm. know I'm not golf. the only one who doesn't know what sports is. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm it not. Was just, golf it was, ball. it was excessive. I'm not asking for more butt shots. I'm really not. I don't care. That's not really what I'm here for with Terrace House, right? But. In, to play devil's mm. advocate here, no one complained when they showed us Kaito's taint in the bathtub <laughs> with the other dudes in ONT and just like man ass and like pubis and everything. Like, no one cares. Yes. And now we but, see a chick hit a golf ball and now it's a thing. But we were in the bathroom. I expect to see <laughs> naked true. people in the bath. I don't expect to see lingering shots of asses uh. on the driving range. I will. I sympathize with Shohei here, okay, because I have definitely tried to swing in a golf ball and hit nothing but air, and it is so demoralizing when you do that. But then when you, fi- I don't know if you guys have ever been to a driving range, but when you actually do it and it like goes flying and actually looks like a real human being hit a golf ball, it's a good feeling, man. I don't mm. know, it does something to you. Yeah, he yeah, does, he does finally hit one at the end, right? He chants Ludo Fun, Ludo Fun, Ludo Fun, and he hits it. I was yeah. like, good for, good for you. <laughs> you good for you. Your you did it. Food. We find out yeah. later that Haruka was kind of a dick and put, like, pictures of him being terrible online. <laughs> like, damn, girl, it's his first time. Like, kind Savage. of teacher are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Geez, I mean, she, Haruka can drive a car. She can drive a golf ball. What else can she drive? Oh, she's I got, got it. She's got capabilities. For sure. Uh, but after after the little putt-putt golf sesh, they do get some ramen. And this is where, uh, this is actually what I'd like to call character development, if this were a scripted show, where Haruka apologizes to Shohei about the whole tempura incident, essentially. Mm. Obviously, they don't call it the tempura incident, but, you know, that whole shebang. She's like, oh, I'm sorry if I came off as argumentative or if I hurt your feelings when we discussed our work philosophies, right? I don't know. It was a yeah. cool scene. It was, it was a good scene, yeah. and um, I really like that he talked about, or they t- they talked about their their manager or Shohei's manager saying something to him uh, when he was thing. doing like the construction, wherever they were going on and on about him being wishy washy, yeah. uh, and she actually talked about that and she mentioned it, and he was like, well, maybe the dude that's your boss for this for this construction gig or whatever, maybe he has your best interests in mind. Maybe he's just trying to, he just wants you to be better, the best that you can be and stuff like that. And so I thought that was a really cool moment. And I think that's definitely something Shohei needed to hear. Yeah. But Shohei's still Shohei here. Cause he, he talks about money. Mm-hmm. He says, even if I were making $3,000, like I said, the translations translated to dollars. So even if I were making $3,000 a month from acting, I'd still want to be doing the other things because like it, the money isn't what matters is the fact that I'm doing the other things that matters. It's the variety. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we're getting a lot of money talk th- this season. A lot of people money are very talks. open about the type of money they make. For sure. 
I will say that Shohei got points for me here. I don't know. It just seemed like a cool thing that they smoothed it over. But the bigger question I had was like, okay, it's kind of blown over now. Like, did that one m- disagreement at the table qualify as an incident now? Kind of seems a little overblown to me from what we've come to know as an incident on Terrace House. Is this still I, I incident mean, I status agree. for you guys? Yeah, yeah, I think it was overblown a little I bit. Think- we compared it to the uh, the tap the dreams incident with tap right in BGITC, mm-hmm. where it wasn't really that big of an incident. It was just a yeah. little hurdle at the beginning. Mm-hmm. For no, to no get one cried, but yeah, it definitely no kind of drove a pretty decent wedge in in the the good vibes in the house that were mm-hmm. happening thus far. Yeah, agreed. I, but a month later, everyone's recovered. I would yeah. say. Mm-hmm. Right, enough so yeah. that an apology has happened here and everything, and I mean, Shohei even um kind of lifts the veil here a little bit, you know, peeking behind the curtain a little here, where he says, "Yeah, I don't care about impressing people. Maybe I'm a little cynical," and then Haruka goes for the throat and is like, "Sometimes you act a little too cool," and he's like, "Yeah, I, I guess, yeah, I kind of do, but I looked uncool today, you know, doing the golf," and it's like, okay, he's. He's kind of warming up to her in the house, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's nice. Mm-hmm. It's nice to see. Yeah. Yeah, may- maybe that could turn into something. Ooh. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you know, it turns into one of those things where, like, maybe he's one of those people that likes other, like, somebody that can really get on him about stuff. Mm. I will say, if they do get together, I have no idea what happens, but if they do, it, I will have never seen it coming. I could never predict that based on the tempera conversation. Yeah, I, I'll just, I'm just going to say it's n- not not a possibility <laughs> right there we go that's a good way of putting it yeah so let's jump to the next date but not date but actually is a date in this episode where uh haruka and ruka go over to rod motors right and it starts with shohei in the kitchen working on his article <laughs> haruka walks in she's ready to leave and then <laughs> shohei's like so are you ready for the date and she's like I don't think this is a date. I'd be nervous no. if this was a date. And he laughs and then says, I think this is a date. A date. And then she looks immediately nervous. <laughs> I love that. How, she's the one that asked him out and they're going to go meet her brothers and fathers kind of in spirit. And then yeah. they're going to go have steak. How does she think it's not a date? I think she's playing there. I think she's playing coy. I I don't know. I, she like literally went like... Pfft. It's not a date. It's not a date. <laughs> like you're being ridiculous. Like it's Ruka. She was, but I think she kind of secretly liked that it was like, oh, it's a date. Mm, definitely. Oh, see, I got cause... that outside reassurance that it's a date because she's been having a hard time figuring out how to read Ruka. So, question, question for the table. So when. How do, how do I ask this? So when is it appropriate when you first meet someone to like delineate between hanging out and getting to know someone and then like date and then you switch over to date like this is a date. When should it be explicitly said that this is a date? How many times is this a problem that happens in America? Because I don't know because I don't feel like it, in the Western world it's quite as ambiguous. Like usually at least in my experience I know when I'm going on a date. I know when I'm not. It's never just like not stated. It's just like explicitly like, no, I'm going to take you out and or we're just hanging out as friends. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you guys ever get into situations where you don't know? Because I don't think I ever have gotten into an ambiguous situation like that. I have. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, well, yeah, it was one of those things where it's like it wasn't explicitly stated one way or the other. I, it was kind of like just kind of seeing where things are going. But like when you when you explain it to a third party, it kind of sounds like a date the way you explain it when you say to somebody else yeah right see it always gets messy if you try to tell someone you're interested in hey let's just hang out as friends and see where it goes right because you may say that and you may on paper say we're just hanging out as friends but inside you're like i want to fuck and that's not a great <laughs> way to enter. And to put it bluntly. And, and now the world knows what Robert's thinking when he's just sitting there slurping his ramen and then you're the only one at the table with him. <laughs> exactly. So what I'm saying is you can't treat someone that you see in your mind as a potential romantic partner as a friend that could become a romantic partner. Because that just makes it weird for everyone involved. 
Uh, it depends on the situation, because there's been plenty of stories where people, you know, start out a friend, as friends, and then it turns into stuff, something. I, right. I feel but, like you you know internally. Yeah. Yeah. I Whether mean, there's not, not really any one that. way to, there's not any one way to do it, really. Right. Daily, yeah, you, Daily you, are you saying that you hmm. know internally whether or not you choose to acknowledge it? Yeah, that too, I guess. It's like, I think that you have a good idea when someone else is like, oh, this is totally a date. And at some point you have to make that decision to be like, hey, Mm-mm. great hanging out with you <laughs> as friends. <laughs> like, not to right. promote the idea of the existence of the friend zone but like i feel like there's there's certain vibes to be read like one of the first times that zach and i went out and at some point during dinner he was like this because this is a date right not in exactly like that like he's some nervous <laughs> little boy but it was exactly like, saying that. so smooth no but it was like it was like I said something like, oh, I've never like done that on a date. And he's like, oh, this is a date. And I'm like, yes, this is a date. Oh, wow. And he's like, oh, you know, oh you're the one you who go. made it explicitly clear. Yeah. I'll Wait, so you who, ha- asked, who asked out who? Oh, God. Sorry. Personal. Sorry not know. to get personal on you, but... I, no, I don't remember because it was just like like dur- that's another thing is that sometimes it's just like mutual like um, Jurassic World was coming out and we we're like, let's go see that. Cool. Because we'd already just seen like Mad Max together, so I don't. Mad know. Max is good. I will say that dates I'll are tell you, hard to define. I'll tell yeah. you when you know you're not on a date is when someone won't let you like pay their half of the bill. I feel like that might be a clue. Mm. It's not universal, but it's like mm. it's kind of a clue. Like, uh, no, don't. I don't want to. You know. So that. Can, yeah. I, See, can I even pro- there? I'll, go ahead. I want. I want to propose a a world changing society changing product that i'm about to tm and mail to myself oh no um oh boy i want to sell two unisex shirts one that says we're just friends and another that says we're on a date <laughs> and it's... when you go on a date with someone you wear the shirt and when oh, you man. meet you'll know immediately where both of you stand oh that's awkward wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's, I mean, a, that's, that's making me uncomfortable. Yeah, that, that <laughs> really spells things out. The visual. <laughs> that, so, that first like meeting would be so nerve wracking. It's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> what if they forget to wear the shirt and then you're the one that wore the shirt and they're like, oh. oh and then there's a meta game. Oh, man. There's enough games in love and life. We don't need another. I want to teleport us back to the table at fucking Terrace House, okay? Because the sky parts, the sun starts shining down, beams of light, God rays, the birds are singing as Ruka enters the room. It swells. And Haruka is, like, smiling. And she says, you look breezy. And he said... I feel breezy or something like that. Breezy. And the music that was, that was smooth. <laughs> the music starts playing and swelling. I'm just like, what is this? He's like the dream boy of Terrace House and she can't stop smiling. Can she's we talk about it. his hair though? Yeah. I hate so it. he's like, I know I'm going to a, a garage, so that means I need to grease my hair back like I'm some sort of grease monkey. Yeah. I, it I did like not dripping wet. It was not a good look. It was like he no. just walked out of the shower and threw clothes on. He's looking Rico suave, I miss his guys. Old hair. Ave arriba, Rico. Yeah. But nonetheless, they do drive to the the uh, rod motors. They do put the top down. It's very California esque feeling mm. about it. Uh, but there's not much that really happens at the motor shop itself. You know, uh, Ruka meets the two people. He meets Makoto and Rio Katsuragi. He's very awkward around them. And then they're like, hey, we know people who sell Harleys who might be able to get you a good deal. And that's kind of it. (laughs) I mean, it's casual. (laughs) Let me ask you real quick, um, back to before they got there. When they're in the car, does anyone remember, was Haruka bringing up in conversation any of the other guys in the house to him? Does anyone remember? Because I don't think she was. Mm -mm. And this is the, if it isn't, if she wasn't, then this is the first time she's been in the car with a guy not talking about another guy in the house. And I just want to point that out. Maybe, but it was also very short. I remember it was basically like they were in the car, they put the top down, then we're at Rod Motors. Like they yeah. could have cut, also, you know. Ruka was driving, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she trusted him to drive. So mm. here's my take on this too. Seeing them in that car, 
they Ruka I thought looked kind of suave. Okay, I don't I, I don't hate his hair because it's a special occasion. If he did it all the time, I'd get tired of it. But one time, I'll, I'll, I'll forgive him there. I think the hair is fine. Haruka I thought looked fine too. Her glasses were glamorous. She looked good. So they both look good. But mm. I realized here they don't look good as a couple to me. They don't look harmonious. I can't see them mm. Mm. as a couple. I can see just on the visual, right? This is just purely uh, superficial. I can see Risako and Ruka, but I can't see mm. Ruka and Haruka to me in my mind. That's all. Interesting. Well, I mean, as we go on, Haruka, I guess, agrees with you there. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, but so after the uh, garage date, they go to Steakhouse B and M. <laughs> B and M. It was those two letters, wasn't it? It was just B and M. Listen, oh. we don't need to explore this, but if you speak English, you know what those two letters typically stand for next to each other. Not no, maybe what, the most what appetizing. Are they, what, no. what are they? What are they stand Nothing. for, Jack? I don't know. But let me listen. I'm going to tell you that corn and those potatoes and that meat look oh. fucking good on that skillet, and I'm starving right mm-hmm. now, and I can't wait to go eat something. I'm a, it looked you, like. It looked like a Texas roadhouse, like yeah. with all like the the paneling, like the wood paneling and like this like really big booth. I was like, this looks mm. like an American restaurant. Exactly yeah. the kind of Definitely. restaurant I love going to. I was so I was salivating at this dish. This was one of the best things I've seen so far in Terra. Oh, yeah, sure definitely. So I can't be the only one that thought that the shirt that Ruka was wearing made him look extremely skinny. Maybe he is yes. really skinny, but like just the i don't know he he looked really lanky mm. i, I kind of feel like the link i mean look at protagonists in a lot of anime and a lot of uh games i think the lanky skinny tall look is kind of in vogue for J- for japan i'm so yeah. glad that we're we're just full force on him being our anime protagonist <laughs> yes, so is Tokui. he brought that up too this episode <laughs> Um, well, yeah, he dyed his hair black. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm he's just saying, man. He's, he's, he's he a, a womanizer of... accidentally. Maybe. Oh, yeah. That's that's a usual trope where it's like all these girls inexplicably are in love with him and he has to decide between them. But not. I don't know. Yeah. But, but in the vein of him being an anime protagonist, I feel like Haruka is more of like a shonen protagonist because she gets down to business. She's like, answer me this. How do you feel about Risiko? Oh my yeah. gosh. Like, yeah, she just goes straight in. to it. She pressed the man. She pressed him. Yeah, right for the jugular. And, she, and he, he he squirms a little. He doesn't really answer her in a straightforward way. He's just no. like, I mean, you know, we're both we're both very playful. I mean, he straight up says it's complicated. To me, yeah. I'm reading in between the lines, and to me, I, this as might as well have been a confession. This might as well have been him putting up a barrier between him and Haruka in a weird way. To me, because to say it's complicated while you're on a date, like wow, that's like kind of shutting the door in a way. Mm. I mm, maybe not intentionally, but it definitely put up a wall. I will say that. To me, I didn't. I actually came away from that scene thinking like no he gave her the go ahead like really? he kind of just put Risiko into oh you know like we just hang out but that's it he said something to the effect but that's all just during yeah, the day we're, we're like, buddies yeah, yeah the, I, the, the buddies. thing that I'm I think I'm just hung up on that he that he said it was complicated implying that there was maybe something happening maybe not like the Facebook status I see yeah. yeah, I read that as he is totally aware that Risiko likes him mm. because that's really hard not to mm. notice at this point for anybody involved. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, well, I mean, she literally said, be my boyfriend. She may have See, been drinking, but even still. I, I read it as he wants to keep his back up, Risiko, but also leave the door open for his goal. Harder. Is he that nefarious? You so- think? I mean, he, listen, maybe, so you're saying he's kind of challenging Haruka, like, hey, this is complicated. I'm over here. Make a move. Balls in your court, I, Haruka. Kind of like that? 
it's partially that and partially also like if he if he had for example said oh no i don't like risiko right and then haruka turns him down and then he like a dog scurries back to risiko which she shouldn't take him in that situation but if he does at least he doesn't look like a two-timing liar by telling haruka i don't like risiko and then going back to risiko i wonder what happens when risiko wow. sees this episode in the house oh yeah, buddy let's wait oh, like buddy. five more weeks for that um mm. but yeah that that's that's pretty much that scene um haruka also asks like hey are you looking for love in the house and he deflects by asking her the same thing and she thinks that this house might be the best way for anyone to find love which she seems like she's going to pursue going at 60 miles an hour real quick i will say to to talk really? about her seeing risiko seeing the episode Five weeks is a long time in the house. That's yeah. a lot of room for stuff a lot to happen. Can happen. I mean, for after sure. this episode, we look like this we're. Week. Yeah. yeah, it looks like after this episode, we're on the precipice of an explosion. <laughs> right. So let's let's get to the volta of this episode, right? Because it what? starts with. Wait, what's that hmm, mean? It's the turn. It's a poetic term for the turn, <laughs> the turn and the other, the savage, unexpected left turn into. See, madness. I don't think I knew what it meant, but I kind of picked up what you meant by context clues yeah. for the layman, for okay. the layman's. Yes, the okay. turn yeah, in this episode, right? mm-hmm. uh, when they're all yes. in the playroom. So I was mistaken last week. I thought last week is when the first episode was up for everyone, but it was just the oh. interviews this week in the house is the first week that we're seeing them with the actual episode one on netflix for them this was and, extra surreal because i cannot think of be boys and girls next door notwithstanding i cannot think of any scene where the entire house together is watching the show as a group i've seen like three or four people but never yeah. the whole house and i was like why would you do that it just seems so awkward like it just <laughs> seems like something i would never want to do like no i'm not going to do this yeah they're yeah, all confessing they're all talking i mean they all get embarrassed basically yeah, and that's fun. It is kind of cute though watching them all, right? Because like Hanukkah totally. especially, you know, she 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 crumbles, right? She yeah. just loses all life in her limbs and are just like, oh, nope, I can't handle this anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, um, Shohei's like, God. I need to go out for a smoke. <laughs> this I is love too much. how they all instantly jump on Shohei because it's like I'm I'm very strongly drawn to you, Kathy, and everyone's like. <laughs> <laughs> and then it flashes to Haruka, and she's like deadpan, like really? Why are you just saying this in front of us? For she's, real? Like, she's like, make it stop, make it stop. When she's watching it, God, yeah, I was honestly like one of my favorite scenes in this episode. But this is also where everything just starts changing because the guys all leave for one reason or another, and it's just the girls in the room. And this is where they all start kind of revealing that Risiko and Haruka have their sights set on Kenny. They have both given up on Ruka. When did that happen? I don't know. When did this happen? Oh, right. <laughs> Bomb time. Because yeah, I, I think this is where the hard left turn happens, people. Yeah, Risiko says. I think her justification is that watching that first episode, she's reminded of how mature Kenny is. Don't know if that's a real good read of him, but fine. And because of that, she's saying, "Oh, I actually like Kenny now." This is the and widest we- age difference. It is a very wide age difference. That's uh, what, 10 years? 11? I think 10. 31 okay. to 21. A lot. Yes. It's a big jump. Much yeah. more appropriate than 31 and 18, though. Or 19. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Very, yeah. very sure. Um, wow. It's just a shock. I don't know. I'm without words here. I know. I was shook at this moment. And, you know, Haruka is also saying, you know, oh, I still think Rook is cute, but Kenny's the most manly. And also pretty much the only person I see as a potential partner in the house. So if things fail with Kenny, she has a high likelihood of just leaving and booking it. So the seeds of this were planted on previous episodes when she said to his face in a mentor way when they were having that conversation in the playroom, she just said "I something along the lines of I'm very emotionally affected by your music. Oh, Risiko. Risiko said that, yeah, yeah, to Kenny, right? And it's just like, like the, he, it, it kind of worked on her a little bit, charmed her, I think, or, you know, gave him at least a positive disposition, gave him an in. But, man, that means that means she likes Kenny the musician, man. <laughs> I was going to say, not, like, you better not, not lose your right hand now, <laughs> Kenny. You're fucked here. Yeah, I. so here's the thing, though. 
how does Kenny feel in any of this? Because I don't think Kenny really has that much of an interest in either of them as far as we know. But you know See, what? Yes, it was so strange. Like that whole conversation because Cowrie's just there and it's like for some reason everyone has it in their, their head because like she and Shohei have gone out once that people are like, oh, like we don't like they're just going to wind up together. It's fine. It's fine. When is is no one paying attention to like this very real connection that I feel like Cowrie and Kenny have? I know. Like, I agree. They, they really get each other. Like, maybe that, that doesn't have to blossom into romance, but I just thought it was interesting that neither Haruka or Risiko see Kauri as a threat whatsoever in this in this love triangle that they've created. Yeah. It's a weird yeah. way. In a way, Shohei kind of planted his flag like day one where he's like, I am drawn to you strongly. I think those words really rung throughout the house. Is like He's like, you're who I want to date. You know, so definitive that maybe the guys backed off of her and maybe she was pulled to him more because he made such a definitive proclamation of his feelings so early. Yet, though, mm -hmm. the Kenny Cody chemistry is so subtle, yet so good. It's easily the best chemistry mm -hmm. on this season. It is. Like, I just think of this scene a little bit later, right, where they're all in the kitchen. Kenny comes home from recording, and he's the first one to talk to Cowdy about this boring-ass project she's working on with Moleskin, which I do like mm -hmm. Moleskin notebooks, but it's just like, as a topic of conversation, why would you really talk about that much? But he's the one that latches onto it and can talk to her about it. And two, he's the only person in the entire house who noticed that she got a haircut. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's right. There was that look too. Mm. I forget who it was. Yeah, it was Haruka that was like, oh, like kind of like looked over, uh -oh. like, uh -huh. oh, oh, he notices things. A about challenger her. And has even appeared. kind of like yeah. smacked down Risiko at the same time because it was like, oh yeah, moleskin. And then he looked over to Risiko and it's like, you have no idea what we're talking about, do you? And she's like, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I I would just like to say though, like. So there's Kenny and Co uh, Cody. They have this chemistry, right? But like Cody still reinforces that she has at least some passing interest to Shohei. Yeah. Well, no, she I did she reinforce that. that. I think it was this main... episode or last episode that she still has interest in Shohei. I think she said this episode that that's kind of her main love interest right now. I thought. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's Could clear cut really... now. For me, I I would not use the word love interest like. She just like she only wound up having plans with Shohei is how I feel like it's sh it's shaken out like as far as like let's go out and do something other than her and Kenny going out which was seen as like kind of like a business thing because it's like we're picking out shirts for her cafe line. If I have to pick two people that I want to watch in a room, just hang out. It's definitely Kenny and Kauri. They have the best chemistry of everybody, mm -hmm. and they're not as they're more mature than you know Ruka or, or and Risiko together. But I am getting friendship vibes here. I, if they linger too long in this weird gray area, I can totally see this being a friend thing, and maybe lifelong, long term friends. But mm. I'm I'm weary whether or not this will get romantic. But I hope for it. We'll have to see because there's so like everyone's arrows are kind of pointed at Kenny mm -hmm. right now. It's kind of wild. And and I, I want to bring us back to the scene in the living room with Shohei and Risiko. It's a scene where Risiko is working on some di diet plans or something for work. And then they start talking about Ruka, right? And here Risiko kind of gives her further argument as to why Ruka isn't a potential partner for her. And is that she sees him as too immature too childish that he feels quote unquote exclusively like a daytime buddy Ooh. Ooh. not a nighttime buddy she would never spend nights with him except my for play, playing speed my play school friend yes <laughs> but she also mentions that she can't she doesn't feel like she can drink with him which is odd I, I didn't really know he didn't did? drink yeah I and well, and she also says that she feels like she can't really confide more serious things in him. He's or a child, she, or yeah, because he's not he's not gonna you know come back with some sort of helpful advice or really at least try to dive deep in those subjects. Which yeah, I mean he doesn't have much experience to speak about because he's young. Such um, an important so part of courtship is those quiet, very 
touching personal conversations you have with somebody one on one. And she has Absolutely. that with Kenny. And she does not have yeah. that relationship with Ruka. And it, that is a big deal. That's a big revelation, in my opinion. Yeah. I, f- I feel like that was her turning point was that she definitely has a lot of fun with Ruka and mm-hmm. really enjoys hanging out with them. But when she was like down on the line, like, man, I, I need to talk to someone about what am I doing with my life? It wasn't Ruka that she turned to. She turned to Kenny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of the perfect storm for, for Kenny right now. And I just want to claim this is my victory. This is I did it. Ruka's bad now in the house. No one likes him, and I'm happy. <laughs> He's not yeah, necessarily he lo- bad. He's just less good. But he hasn't done anything vil- to vilify him yet. But I'm fingers crossed still. Maybe one day. <laughs> he just he just didn't live up to. I feel like almost what happened is that it was a very potent combination when it came to him and Haruka. Of he didn't live up to expectations for her when they actually got to like go and hang out and she was also like oh he's probably a lost cause like i need to concede him to risiko and then in the background the whole thing with risiko and kenny have happened so Mm. we we got the wires crossed everywhere here he he's eye candy for the girls he's the f in mfk yep there I, i remember in the very first episode that we covered Jack and I were both like, I'm already sick and tired of Ruka's I'm an adorable child who gets red in the face shit. And now five, six weeks later, I think the rest of the house is they're not as annoyed as we are, maybe, but definitely like, oh, that's it. Like, he's just he's just a child. I just had a thought. Maybe that's Ruka's problem here. He stopped getting red. Hmm. Maybe he needs to drum that shit back up. He needs to blush oh his charms back And then everyone like, oh, would be like, ah. I can't talk. I can't drink soda. I can't drink coffee. I can't drink. I can't Some do dishes without charm. turning red next to you. Reese, like, oh, oh gosh. Maybe that'll you work. Know, well, the, the, the fact of the matter is, Ruka just isn't very dimensional. He doesn't even have a single dimension. He doesn't even have a Volta. <laughs> he, he flat. He's skinny. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He's just like, what? what is Ruka's personality beyond being the shy, you know, red in the face boy? He's Harley, fun. He likes Harleys. He's fun. Yeah. To, he's um, just a friend. He's friend stuff. Yeah. Though. I'm not he's saying ham- there's anything wrong with yeah. him. It's just he's handsome. In terms of I, it, it's under, it's understandable for that reason why people would lose interest, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, So to bring it back to where we are in the episode, right? Um, We're we're back in that scene in the kitchen where Kenny notices the haircut, right? And then things get really uncomfortable for me, at least, because now Risiko is trying to set up this group date with everyone that she and Kenny talked about, right? But also she just mentions to everyone, also Kenny and I have a lunch date that we're going on together. That's just a whole whole scene's a mess. Yeah, and then Haruka. I was was confused. Her (laughs) eyes daggers into Haruka's head it was so uncomfortable there was like that weird moment too where like Risiko is like just staring and even Kenny was like what's this face and she's like oh I'm just did we make everyone change their plans like I didn't Mm. understand like uh, like everyone's going to go eat truffles is that what it is and then she just was like but will that conflict if we go to a cafe which we totally talked about doing which Mm -hmm. I don't think they talked about doing but that was that was smooth I'll admit that's a good move to be like hey we talked about doing this and it's like oh Okay, Did sure. we? Yeah, sure. <laughs> she she kind of just comes off as a little passive aggressive here because I remember this one line. She says something like, "I'm willing to be malleable for my seniors" or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And my it just, yeah, my it just seniors. came off. It's very, very like I'm better than you, so I can I can change my schedule to fit you. Ooh, you know, y'all yeah. drama, drama yeah. happening here. It's yeah, building it. up, y'all. It is it's building up. Whew. All right, so we're in the final home stretch here, y'all. This is a long episode, thick. so it's very thick with two C's. So Haruka and Kaori retreat to the girls' room, and at this point, Haruka says, "I wanted to ask Kenny out on that live show day. I want to like reaffirm those plans, but I didn't want to do it in front of everyone. Just kidding, just not in front of, <laughs> not in front of Risiko, basically." Um, so they, they devise this little scheme where they go upstairs to the roof to join them while they're drinking. And Kaori asks Risiko to come downstairs to get some drinks so Haruka can strike. 
What a wingman. Yeah. Good, good for Kauri. Yeah. Kauri's solid. But it doesn't solid. feel like she's like taking sides like like in the sense of like, oh, we're totally against Risiko now. I think she's just trying to be, you know, like, you told me about this. I want to help you out. Yeah, I agree with that. But wasn't it brought up by the panelists, too, though, that it could be seen later on by if Risiko watches the show that she was getting ganged up on? Wasn't that a concern that was brought up? Ooh. That they're kind I of dog, that. Dog I can see that, her. though. I, yeah, can I, think see the, that. I think the panelists did bring that up. So I'm curious to see how it all plays out. But we'll it, was a good, it was a good thing that Kaori did, I thought, in my opinion. For sure. Um, and also, I just want to point out, while we're here in the rooftop scene, Shohei all of a sudden seems like he thinks he's a master at golf. He's kind of like, oh, look at my form that I figured out. Like, it's the best form. Look at this. And Kenny's like, this this idiot doesn't know what he's talking Dude, about. It's li- I don't know how many days <laughs> passed in the episode, but it's literally the same episode. <laughs> yeah. He's like, now all of a sudden. Uh, it's, it's like, did he, get, is there some weird, like, offline montage I saw of him, like, slowly getting better with every cut? You know, maybe that's why tiger. He, that's, maybe that's why he picks up so many hobbies, because he masters them all in a day. Oh, man. It was pretty funny, Whoa. but he's, he's proud. Of, he's proud of his swing, though. He's like, "Check me out, guys." Are we gonna see him next episode? Like, yeah, I just bought this, you know, two thousand dollar set of clubs. Yeah, what's oh, up, gosh. guys? And, and then three episodes later, he's like, "Guys, I build Gundams now." To his credit, though, it seems like I mean, he's he, it seems like he's consistently practicing golf, right? He didn't just pick it up one day and drop it all of a sudden. Like, we'll yeah. see how long it, it keeps happening, he, but he, he's trying. He said he wanted to make it a routine. Yeah, habit. Which, yeah. you know, it's it's golf is cool, but I'm is also it? wondering if it. I think it's cool, but I'm also <laughs> wondering if, like, is this? And I think I think even was it Kenny who mentioned it? Someone mentioned someone in the house mentioned it. it's like, oh, is he wanting to get to hang out with Haruka more? Is he wanting to get on Haruka's good side? Yeah, I think I remember a Cody being the one who said that. It's like I, I've noticed oh. him since you've come back from that golf date. He's been practicing his golf more. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. 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 Yep. I remember that. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, kind of reaffirming that, like, maybe the Shohei Haruka thing is a possibility. Mm. On the whole is Ooh. golf cool debate, I've never actually gone, like, with a <laughs> cart and, like, beer and, like, swinging clubs, like, on the green. That sounds kind of cool. I've just never done it, so I can't speak to it. But going to a top golf and a driving range and just, like, going up there and swinging a bunch and hitting as hard as you can, when you finally connect, it's very satisfying. And the sound mm. is, is – it's good sound. It is pretty good sound. <laughs> sounds like but... you're hawking lugs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, yes. On that so, note, <laughs> back, back to Hawk and Lugs on the roof. Um, yeah, so Haruka and Kenny solidify their live show date. And then Shohei just kind of out of the blue is like, hey, Kenny, I want your coffee. Make me coffee. I need coffee. I, need coffee. I want coffee. And, I want the coffee that Kenny makes. <laughs> and, and, and this sounds like someone on this podcast here. The two coffee minimum, Colin Sparling. Got him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> well, he but, does. He does proceed to break out, you know, a cup size Chemex or like a pour over, and he's mm-hmm. grinding his own beans, and he's he's doing it right. I I, mm-hmm. I can see why they want his coffee because pour over coffee is the best coffee. Sure, coming from expert Colin S. Sparling. Yes. There we go. Uh, I, I make pour over every day. What what about it? So one thing I want to point out here is is this felt like a sitcom to me because. Let's just go over the chain of events, right? Shohei wants coffee. Kenny's the only one who can make it. Kenny gets up to start making the coffee. Risiko gets up to follow him because she likes oh. Kenny. Ruka gets up to follow them because she likes he likes Risiko. It's such a sitcom setup that I couldn't yes. help but just laugh at that entire yeah. scene. Oh, yeah. It was 100%. Totally that. It was totally and then, high school. I also... Go ahead. I noticed during this scene, maybe just because I'm primed to hear it after opening new doors, but Rizuko sometimes talks in the third person. Mm-hmm. She says, Rizuko wa, or like, Rizuko will do this. Rizuko will help. She just That's wants to be weird. listened to. Kind of like she wants to be heard. Another Rizuko. Another Rizuko that does this? What is happening? Is what? that anyone who's named Rizuko? That's just, just a deal. trait. It's no. a Rizuko trait. Oh. I mean, you don't see us Collins going around and being like, uh, well, Collins going to have fried chicken tomorrow. Colin likes pour over coffee. 
<laughs> Colin Stop. needs that caffeine. I hate it already. <laughs> Yo, yeah, it doesn't go well over in English. Maybe in Japanese it's not quite as um, hilarious, but it's pretty funny in English. If someone well, were to still, really do it's that. still indicative indicative of like cutesy, like childish kind of vibe. Yeah. Bailey will make coffee with Zach. Ah, yeah. Oh my god. I want to yeah. puke. Exactly <laughs> that. Yeah. I just puked a little bit. <laughs> so, so this this is the uh, the scene of uh, then there were two right with uh, Shohei and Haruka on the roof. Yeah, but. Uh, you know, they kind of talk a little bit, you know, Haruka saying, hey, you know, I, I've i been feeling a lot more comfy with uh, with Kenny. And Shohei says, oh, I thought Kaori liked Kenny. But that was just a weird Dun-dun. one-off. It's not really followed up in any way, shape, or form, mm. but I don't know. At least there's someone in the house who's thinking who's the same aware thing of we're thinking. Yeah. Right? Shohei is us. We're Shohei. Yeah. And then Shohei Do just kind of. Be? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're Shohei. I, I then he proceeds to show like he's kind of out of the loop with everything that's going on. A bit, but you know, at, at this point, Cody comes back. She's layered up a bit because I guess it's getting cold up there. And Shohei, he says that Kenny doesn't tell the guys who he likes, which is a very Kenny thing. Kenny seems to like we've said many times before. He keeps his cards close to his chest. Definitely. But he does think, at the very least, Kenny sees Risiko as a student, and he thinks that it's a mentor-student relationship. Mm. Yeah, I can easily see that. I don't. I don't even see much of a passing interest towards Risiko from Kenny in my head. He could surprise us because he's man's hard to read. You know, yeah. I mean, we got it's this big impossible. of a left turn in this episode. I mean, why? Why not something with Kenny in the next episode? It's you know? not impossible. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Who's to say? I don't know. I mean, I, I just hope it doesn't feel as weird as uh, Rico Hayato. You know, I. Yeah, I guess I it's, just like that. it's hard it to doesn't. get that weird. It's hard. That's a yeah. lofty yeah. goal. Yeah. But we'll have to see, right? Um, anyway, at this point, uh, Kaori, or not Kaori, Risiko and Kenny come back upstairs, coffee in hand for everyone, right? Uh, they say Ruka fell asleep grinding beans, which I think kind of solidifies <laughs> that everyone in the house thinks he's a child because he That's is. Funny. That sounds yeah. like a euphemism for something. You know, it really grinds my beans. <laughs> really grinds my beans. Uh, yeah, it, and he's like the first to fall asleep too. Just again, like he's a little child. <laughs> he's, a, he's a baby. <laughs> I'm just a you know, baby. It's twelve thirty. This is way past my bedtime. Oh yeah. Um. Um. So the decep- one- the deception here is what. I think we're getting to. Yes. Uh, they, you know, ever like Kenny and Risa go ask, oh, hey, what have you guys been talking? Well, mainly Risa go, right? She's the one who asks, what have you guys been talking about? Mm. And Shohei and Haruka are like, oh, you know, Tiger Woods, I guess. Dude, just, yeah, <laughs> you know, Tiger, Tiger Woods. I mean, you know. obviously, you don't expect everyone to just be 100% honest all the time. There are, you know, innocent little white lies, but it was kind of uncomfortable seeing them just mm. like you know the cover-up happening right before our eyes yeah. and Kaori just starts the giggling she, and they're like why are you laughing <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, she's like uh, i don't know uh tiger woods is fucking hilarious that's what it, it kind of is though right like i think they could have just ended it at we t- we're talking about golf we're talking about my awesome impeccable form that i've mastered in in a little less than a week but <laughs> instead they bring up tiger woods <laughs> you know, like it was, he is it was random. Tiger Woods. <laughs> um, another small little exchange here, I think, is worth pointing out. Is Kenny does say that oh, one of these cups is probably a little lukewarm because I had to make these cups one at a time, which is wild. That takes forever. And, yeah, well, yeah, making pour over takes for fucking ever. Yeah. But one Get thing I do want to point out here is that it's Haruka who says, "Oh, mine is a little lukewarm." And then he's like, cool, let's just switch then. It's fine. It's whatever. Selfless. And I'm curious how that, like, if Haruka's going to read into that a bit more. Haruka's going to was... read into it a more. Kenny's not going to give it a second thought. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was actually a lot of indirect kisses this episode. Mm. Like, back when in the kitchen, uh, Kenny at the table when they were, when the whole date figuring out thing was happening he was drinking some kind of liquor that he said tastes like Picari sweat 
which oh, is like yeah. yep. uh-huh. I remember that. Japanese Gatorade. Yep. And Haruko is like, she just put her arm out. She's like, gimme. Yeah. <laughs> I need it. Oh, gimme. I need to try That's it. True. But then it got passed around more. Like someone else tried it, I think. Am I remembering that right? So basically, Terra's house is an orgy this season. I mean, they're definitely yes. getting more comfortable with themselves and with each other. And there isn't much drama yet, you know, as Yama says earlier. Like, it's, this isn't really, it's boring because everyone's getting along. Yeah, but so. this is the storm brewing. The way this episode ends, right, yeah. is uh, Kari leaves. She needs to work on her art some more. Shohei leaves. He's got an article to write. I get that. I've been oh, in that gosh. boat. Yeah. Yep. And then yep. it's just Risako, Haruka, and their main man, Kenny. <laughs> and it ends. <laughs> I'm like, nice. That's a Mex- about to be a Mexican standoff. <laughs> I want to just zoom back just a little bit to that scene where Kauri and um, Haruka are down by the kitchen, right? Mm-hmm. And then they're talking, like, basically Haruka has a revelation there where she's like, she hopes to get to Kenny before Risako shares her feelings. Remember right. that part? And yeah. then and then she's like, is that me being territorial? And I don't know how close the translation that was, but territorial is like a scary word to say when you just like somebody. And it just it's very clingy. I get the I get those vibes. And she's like, am I being territorial? And Kauri, as a good friend, says, yes, you are. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> yikes, Kauri. man. The claws are out. They're coming out. You know, so after this, this crazy episode with such a wild change in direction right because if we didn't really touch on this but the second time we see the panel even they're just like what the fuck did we just watch yeah because that's like, how this I is feel, crazy right? what's happening but i think what's what's kind of interesting in the house is that it's this perfect storm right where you have two girls who seemingly used to like one guy but now both also like another guy Right. So that's four of the people in the house who are in this sort of love square that's slowly becoming a triangle. But then you have. We need to make a diagram. We do. We need to draw this up. And then we have Cody and Shohei who are acting like the coaches or like the the observers of the situation. And they're both Mm -hmm. measured enough human beings that I'm very interested in to see what their dynamic is will do to affect the whole dynamic of the house does that make sense yeah yeah it seems to me like from the girl's perspective here it seems pretty cut and dry like pretty linear here where risiko likes kenny haruka Wait, she likes Kenny. Crap, never mind. <laughs> hold on. No. Uh, it's, well, it's, it's, clear cut. Uh, it's very clear cut, guys. No, I no, promise. No. Hold on. Kauri, I had this worked out earlier. Kauri likes... <laughs> Kauri I had it, guys. It was like, it's written down. I like promise. Shohei. Okay, Kauri likes Shohei. Haruka likes Kenny. And we thought until everything got all jumbled up and scrambled here that Rizuko and Ruka were going to get together. It was so mm-hmm. orderly. It was so planned out. It was so going to work and we're gonna have three couples in the house which i can't there's probably never been a time where that's ever happened that i know of and uh Uh, yeah yeah and so i it's not like that though it's way more complicated it's getting juicy it's getting spicy we got these thick ass episodes coming up i don't know how many how how long the next one is but we we're gonna see some shit i have a feeling yeah i mean the next episode is called woman to treat and woman to split a check with i yo, guess alluding to yo. what jack said earlier where if you split the check that's that's a sign right yo mm. it's a sign you're on a you're not on a date if somebody's adamant about splitting the cost mm. with you mm. oh. yeah. mm. i wonder those are those are going to be kenny's words you maybe think? they're going to be mm. kenny's words or shohei's words or definitely not Ruka. words <laughs> <laughs> hmm? I say Tokui. Uh, Tokui yeah, always Tokui. comes up with these these clever these clever you know? things. Yes. You're right. I my money's on Tokui actually. Yeah, it's a good call daily. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean just like looking at that and just seeing where we are, an argument will brew between Risiko yep. and Haruka because they both seem like the kind of people who can't deal with the fact that someone else likes their mans. I can see this, this upcoming episode as s- there's going to be salt getting slung around, and then maybe in the preceding episode, 
there's going to be blood being shed. Whoa. We'll find Let's out. Let's get ready Blood to shed. rumble. Yes, yes. And, and Shohei's just going to sit there working on his new Gundams. <laughs> he, dude, he'll be over <laughs> why, the Gundam. Why is it Gundam? He'll, no, he'll be over that by now. I, I he's going to write an making, article about it. Robert's making a pass at me. <laughs> but, oh, this is an internal thing. Yeah. Going on in the, I was oh not own. making a pass at you. In but, the okay. sparling household. <laughs> It's because no, because I am I am known as the serial hobbyist around these parts. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, we no, should keep like, tally Shohei. how many how many um, hobbies Shohei gets in his time in the house because it's climbing by the episode. Yeah, where are we at right now? We were at actor, model, actor, model. writer, writer, interior person, painter, uh, golf, golf. Now he's Golfist. a relationship advisor. Uh huh. There we go. He's yeah. going to be a, a peer mediator. Oh, he's a cook. Mm. I mean, hey, he cooked the, a yeah, dang cooking. curry in this episode. Yes. Oh, so. my gosh. We forgot to make fun of Ruka for that because I can't eat it. It's too spicy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. God. <laughs> yeah, dude, this you're just red faced. baby. Not, he is not doing himself any favors. No. It's like, yeah. this is going to really hurt when I poop later. <laughs> Ruka, <laughs> shut up. Jeez. Golf yeah. sounds like a religion. It kind of does. I'm a golfist. It's like, oh, what are you, atheist, Christian? No, I'm golfist. Yeah. Golfist. But I think that brings our episode here to a wrap. Yeah. Nah, this is a monster, gargantuan one. I mean, yeah. I Also, just again, sandwich this episode with congrats, Yama. You got married, man. You fucking did it. You're the first one in Terrace House. I oh, was shocked. Though. We didn't talk about this earlier. I do want to spend a minute here about this. I was shocked at the genuine concern from the Terrace House community that he would leave the show, that he he would completely change his attitude, that he would not be the same Yama. Like, what? I mean, just because you get married doesn't, like, I mean, it's I'm married, right? I'm the only married person on our show, our humble podcast. You're the Yama of this show. I, I would like to think so. Oh. I would like to think Ooh. so. But I, I, you know, what I mean, I kind of, you know, I kind of compartmentalize, right? Like, I have my married life, but then I have uh, the time we spend here every week, and I don't let the married stuff interfere with my takes or the way I talk or what I do or anything like that. So, I really have confidence that Yama is going to remain the good old Yama that we've come to know and love, and I, I don't see him getting affected. I really hope not. But there was a lot of concern from the community. I was kind of surprised to see that. They were like, he can't be dastardly anymore because he's married to this beautiful woman. <sighs> yeah, he can't nah, be. He, I mean, he leak. hasn't been pulling any punches, as far as I can tell. So. He can't be no, a rapscallion no, anymore. It's fine. Yeah, I, I think he's part of it Yama. is maybe part of the audience doesn't, you know, because I think most of us here, except for maybe Daily, come from this background of not liking reality TV shows. I liked them back in the day. I still dislike them. <laughs> Bachelor <laughs> Night? Just because she watches them doesn't mean she doesn't hate herself yeah. for it. <laughs> Get fair. She, exactly. She, she does it because, <laughs> because her friends do it. She cries herself to sleep every yeah. night. Fair. After watching it. Yeah. But nonetheless, but, so we, we, if, you, we if your friends from... jump off a cliff, will you too, Daily? Whatever, Dad. Shut up. Got it. <laughs> yeah, really. I feel. I, I instantly just felt like oh. I wanted to. T I was gonna tell you to shut up, but Jack did it for me. <laughs> My teenage rebellion just instantly came She's out. She's gonna lead a fucking posse. Words. She's gonna lead a posse of baby ballerinas to come choke your ass out. She's done it before. Just watch out, Sparling. Oh, oh I was yeah. so confused, and then I was like, "No, that is something I've done. Never mind." The ballerina rebellion. Uh, I'm glad that's what I'm known for. Yes. That's by the way, that's a great band name. Same ballerina rebellion. Down. But nonetheless, we all come from backgrounds that that aren't as that don't buy into the reality TV as much, right? So I think for all mm -hmm. of us, we see Yama as a character. I mean, I don't know, but I guess I can't speak for you guys, but I don't see Yama as in real life. If I were to sit down and have a beer with this man, he would be making fun of every couple in the bar. You know what I mean? This I is mean, all it's a character. Yeah. It's you a can say character. character if you want. I'm a little uncomfortable with that term. I would just think more like an on-stage, on-air personality. I feel yeah. a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, it's the same idea. idea. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But he's on stage. Yeah. And so are we. Exactly. I feel, yeah. I feel like after he says, like, in person, like, he'll make the jokes and say the cruel things. But he'll be like, no, 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 no. You know I'm, I don't mean that. And it's yeah. like the people that know him know that he doesn't mean that. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, he, yeah, he ain't sitting there like making fun of his wife and shit. <laughs> like, you know, right. like in their day to day, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, but he actually published a book recently about like how hard he works on his comedy. 
and how it's kind of just this like all day, every day, always thinking about, you know, what's the most humorous thing I can do. Right. Mm. So I think he's a diligent enough man to know, like, just because he's married and allegedly happy doesn't mean he needs to be happy on the show. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I hope he doesn't Go get him. happy because he's funnier he, when he's mad. <laughs> unlike Ruka, he is multidimensional. Exactly. Yeah. Gotta there get that one know. last sick burn in there right before we wrap up. Because <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Ruka. You are. Uh, but yeah, I think that wraps up this week's episode, this monstrous 57 minute episode we watched of Terrace House. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you think we missed, because we, we honestly might have. There was a lot to cover here. Yeah. Uh, please feel free to email any and all of those things to us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. Uh, you can tune in next Tuesday for uh, our coverage on episode seven, Woman to Treat and Woman to Split the Check. And just as a fun little bonus, next Thursday, expect a little drop of uh, a, a unique little one-off that we're going to do. It'll be really fun. It's a qu- it's quick a, little a Q&A thing. episode whoa, whoa. that we're excited to do. Um, but yeah, I think that about wraps us up here. This has been Tadaima. Thanks for listening. Itekimas. If you enjoy our show, please like, comment, and subscribe, and ding the bell to receive notifications when we publish new content. Follow us on social media and check out our brand new Discord server linked in the description below.